Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared, and that sounded kind of weird, didn't that? Let's redo that. Bang! Neves Knives. I'm Jared, and this is some interesting knives. And this one right here, I have no idea the name of it. Uh, Q Ball made an accidental purchase one night in his sleep, and this is what showed up. In the comments of the unboxing of this, uh, somebody did leave the name of it. I guess they knew the name of it. I don't know how, but I cannot find the comment. Either way, guys, you guys don't want to get it. Trust me. We're going to go through why, but it is very interesting, though. It's very slim and sleek, kind of like the CEO from CRKT. This clip does not work at all, like none yet not at all like once you go to like to try to put it in your pocket your pocket just hits it <laughs> it's not going in at all i never got it in my pocket i know i could lift it but yeah it don't work next bad thing is look at that edge you can see the edge is all the way down and that's not even the worst part but yes, I can touch the entire edge, even more right here, which would be like literally the spot you would slip your hand. And yes, it's very slim, but you could still cut yourself if it was in your pocket. But the worst part, in my opinion, I guess maybe some people might consider that the worst part. But the worst part, in my opinion, is if you look down in here, really deep down in there, and if you look at the back spacer, you can see the blade hits the backspacer when it closes. So you can also see it right here. It's literally hitting the backspacer. So talk about not wanting to, one, have a sharp edge because you'll cut yourself, especially if it was really sharp. And two, you'd hate to sharpen your edge and then close the knife because then it just wrecks the edge. You can actually see it right there where it hits. Thick blade stock for such a short blade this is like built like an axe i mean literally like the worst case of geometry ever but i could see this being cool for somebody like in an office setting they just open packages because it would definitely do that without a problem supposedly m390 i'm very suspicious of that because they wrote it twice <laughs> <laughs> they wanted me to believe it so much that they wrote it twice. I have no idea what the 952 is. Um, back or the the stop pin is very, very tiny. Um, they did put a detent ramp in, and the action is actually pretty decent. It's a lighter detent, but they do that on purpose because you're not going to be able to avoid putting your finger on the lock bar. But it snaps out there nice and false shut action. Um, it is very solid, has a nice sound to it. Uh, a lot of little cool things to it, but yeah, it does have an over travel stop, lock bar insert, all the good stuff that a good knife would have. Just this one's just not a good knife. Next. So this knife is the Boker Warbird. Now this is a discontinued knife, but I will say it's still available and it's pretty awesome. One, it kind of looks like a, a Strider-esque knife. This is all aluminum, but it feels and looks just like titanium. It does have a weird lock bar though. If you look back here, you'll see it's kind of like a subframe lock, kind of like um kind of like this, like the the Kershaw bare knuckle or knockout how they have the lock bar, you know, screwed into the aluminum frame. This one gets integrated into the back spacer, which is kind of cool. I never seen that before. And you can see how it wraps around underneath the clip. It's pretty unique, pretty cool. The action is really, really good. The flipper tab, the how close it is to the pivot and how tall it is to the pivot, very, very good action. Great detent with the uh with the flipper tab. And it's very hard to fail because you just have so much leverage on it. Now, the reverse flicking action is also really good. And you have uh, this hole with a, a dent around it, you know, or another hole around it that makes it to where you can hold it a little bit lower if you want to. 
Now, the ergos are also really nice. A lot of times I don't like ergos like this, but in this case, they give you a big area right here where you, you both your fingers can fit instead of just one sitting here and then the other one trying to ride on this little bump. Nope. It works really good, nice and comfortable. You can always go all the way up close right here. It is thinner right here. And it is th slim without being overly slim. It's kind of weird because you see how it's got the chamfering, lots of milling, but it does feel pretty slim in the hand. Um, I have sharpened it. I might tune it up just a little bit more before I send it back, but the edge looks great. It's extremely sharp. D2 steel. And this is one of Bo the Boker Plus models, which are usually a little bit better quality. And this one actually is very, very smooth. I don't like the pocket clip, but, you know, it works. And I'm guessing it's reversible, but who knows. Next. Oh, this was sent in by Oklahoma EDC, by the way. Next. Now, this one I've shown on the channel before, but I kind of want to talk about it really quick just because it is unique. And this was a gift from Timbo. Timbo, thank you, man. The action on these are so, so good. This is the Real Steel Griffin. 14C28N, aluminum scales. I do need to clean it, but it is a button lock. Now, the one thing that's cool about this is it runs on needle bearings instead of regular ball bearings. Uh, Real Steel does do that with a few of their models, which I find very awesome. The action is very smooth and it, it does feel a little different. A lot of people might say that it just feels like it's on bearings, but it's frictionless um smoothness it's just it's a little different very very smooth and i really like this knife now they did make a titanium model i have done a review on that there might be some more of those available but all these uh budget versions or i think this one was the first one that came out but all the aluminum handled versions non-titanium and the 14c28m versions are gone all right, so next one. This is an integral, the Tucson TS-66. Uh, this is a very sought after Tucson. Now, this was basically Tucson flexing in their earlier days. You can still get this. I can link this down in the description, but it's like 260 bucks because it is an integral. The machining is insane and it is extremely well built. Um, the ergos are unique, but they work. It's kind of weird because you look at the handle and you're like, how is that comfortable? But the way it goes is it's thin right here where you, you know, you have a really good spot to choke up kind of, but then this back end, because when you hold any knife, these two pinky or the pinky and the ring finger kind of do all the leverage into your hand because when you're cutting a knife turns, right? Cause the pressure goes towards the blade and it makes the knife rotate. So you squeeze with these fingers and right there, it kind of nestles this thing right in the crack of your hand and it just works so good. It feels really good in the hand. Blade shape is unique. Um, I guess uh, some people would call it a clip point. I guess I'd call it a sheep's foot, but it looks aggressive. It looks mean. The action is really good. Whether you're doing the reverse flicking action or the flipper tab, and also the stop pin is also in integrated into the whole frame. Just literally one solid piece, well, the clip, I guess, two solid pieces, you know, not including all the other little parts. Left handed, uh, maybe not so much. Oh, maybe you can. Um, oh, yeah, and it is M390, night morning design. Nice, huge steel lock bar insert. I mean, just look at the machining on this. They have a lock bar stabilizer, which is basically stops it from um, unspringing when you are disengaging so you don't bend the lock bar too far. Awesome, awesome knife, man. This one's definitely 
very sought after by a lot of people because this was Tucson's most popular knife for a long, long time. And it still is um, sought after. Next. Um, sticking with the Tucson theme before we get to a couple more. This one, I was going to do a review and I didn't. This is the Tucson TS236. It is pretty sweet. Now, if you look at the handle, you see how it's got a finger placement for each one of your fingers. But it works. It really does. Well, I think it works especially because of this little ramp right here. Now, the blade steel is 14C28N. It is a titanium liner lock. You can see the lock bar insert screws right there. They have holes drilled in right here. So when you disengage, the screws go into the carbon fiber, which is pretty unique. Um, Tucson's been doing that lately. Nice and milled out. So this is pretty light considering. And it is a Persian blade, but it's a Persian blade that doesn't go up too high. So it's very easy to get to the tip still. So this is like a Persian blade that I consider still very useful for EDC. I mean, you can easily get to the tip. And when you have this comfortable of a handle, it winds up working out really good. I mean, this thing is very comfortable. It's thick but not too thick. So because it's short this way, it makes up for it being contoured. And I don't know what's up with the this thing, the dot to dot, but whatever. Action is stupid good. Very, very good action. Fall shut action. Clip has some really cool milling, pretty solid in there. Awesome, awesome knife. All right, let's get to this next one. Oh, that was another thing I forgot to talk about on this one. This thing moves all over the place. Um, okay, so next we have the Real Steel Luna Boost. Now, I have done a full review on this, so I'll be quick on this. You can always go watch the full review. But what's cool about this is they, they make a slip joint version of this. Now, this is a frame lock, but... The thumb stud, it, you can remove it and make it a two-hand opening knife. So it makes it where in the UK or other places where you can't have a, a one-hand deployment knife, you can get this and you still have a locking knife. Now, you can also slip this because uh, this thing slips on from the front right here. You just slide it over and then screw it in. So you can have a one hand deploying knife, um, you know, or, you know, I guess it's also, you could consider it a traveler's knife because you can have a one hand deploying knife, or, you know, if you wind up going into places where you can't have a one hand deploying knife, then you could take it off. Jimping on the front and the back here, the pinch grip is nice and comfortable. And this is a somewhat of a gent knife. Nice blasted finish on the titanium. All the colors look really good. Um, the clip works very well, but it is low profile, meaning it's not like standing out. And the thumb disc, you can move it up and down for the position specifically for you. N690 steel. And they are numbered. Oh, yeah. Poltergeist design. All right. Last but not least. Now, this one I've shown on the channel a lot. It was actually one of the first knives we ever shown on the channel, but... The Kubi Anteater, I'll be quick about this. It's just, it is a unique knife. You do not see a lot of knives like this. And Titanium S35VN, they still do sell knives like this. I'm not sure if they still sell the S35VN version, but you can get a G10 version of this or the Titanium. Now, this thing's beefy. No milling on the inside full geared backspacer and the colors are really cool on it uh but it is heavy in in a good way like you feel like you have a, a knife in your hand i like that because it's not too heavy or anything like that it is a little cramped right here but i like to think that it's supposed to be you know because it's supposed to be like kind of like a karambit so it doesn't make sense that they put this lanyard right there, though, because in this grip, you want to be able to put your thumb right there, but you still can, I guess. You can just hold it like that. But very cool. Um, 
uh, nice useful blade shape for certain specific tasks, especially for like opening things up, cutting carpet, linoleum, things like that. Flipping action, very strong detent. Nice smooth action. Listen to that detent when it locks in. It is a lot. It almost feels like it's a magnet. I mean, this thing is very strong. I like it. All the um, or nice big hardware lock bar insert over travel stop. Very cool milling and yeah, all the colors really pop. It's awesome. Um, very unique. Not quite my style of knife, but. I think it's cool. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.